Melissa, the Cupcake Stitcher, and I want to welcome you back to my 17th Lost Tube video. Today is Sunday, October 6th, um, and I am about three days away from Whistle Stop 2019, and I am so excited. Um, so it's been a month, uh, six weeks, somewhere in there, um, since I've last posted a video, and as you can guess, life has been crazy. Um, been logging a lot of overtime hours at work, not by my choice, but just logging overtime hours at work. Um, I had a major presentation this past week. Um, one of the areas that I specialize in the clinic is scoliosis. And I had had, um, a scoliosis patient that was referred by, um, a practitioner at Ohio state in their spine center. Um, and then she went back and kind of bragged about me, which is good. Um, and so that practitioner reached out to me. Uh, she's relatively new to the scoliosis field, is not quite sure, you know, what all the treatment options are. You know, scoliosis can be discouraging because it is a lifelong process that generally continues to get worse over time. Um, and so she's, you know, we had a good conversation. Um, but, you know, a lot of her patients consider scoliosis almost like a life sentence. Um, and it's not. You can, you know, you can definitely do some things for it. And that's, like I said, one of my areas of expertise in the clinic. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I have a good, solid knowledge base on it after a class I took last fall. Um, and so she wanted to know what specifically I was doing. And I talked to my boss about it, you know, just to make sure that was okay, because obviously it is a dis different hospital system. Um, we are linked a little bit, but we are, you know, we're 40, 45 minutes away from Ohio State. And, you know, we, we still want to keep our referrals if they start doing, you know, 100% the same thing. Will we? I, I think yes, but, you know, the boss obviously has the ultimate say. Uh, and the boss was very excited um, that she was interested in that and invited her out um, to the clinic and then invited the entire pediatrics team at our hospital over. And so I had a big presentation this past Tuesday over lunch on um, scoliosis, you know, kind of what we're looking at, um, how we treat. And uh, yeah, it was like an entire lunchtime presentation. That was incredibly nerve wracking because I had... I had like a month to prepare, but we've been so busy that I haven't had time at work to spend on my presentation. So most of it was compiled the week and before, as I'm like two days before the presentation. Um, I'm a procrastinator at heart. It's fine. I do better under pressure. And my boss was pretty pleased with my presentation. So um, I have my annual review this week, right before I leave for whistle stop. Um, and hopefully can kind of talk about different areas that I want to explore or expand upon um, in the next year of my, you know, professional career. So uh, we have a lot of other things going on. My nephew had his one year anniversary of his major brain surgery um, that has left him seizure free for an entire year. So we had a party for that. My brother got a promotion um, within the army. Um, he's going to actually be leaving the reserves and going into National Guard, um, but he's going to be trained to fly helicopters, um, which is really exciting. It's something he's wanted to do for a while, um, and the process has been in play since his deployment. So he had an interview, they narrowed it down to like 15, 16, and then they get, ended up giving four people interviews and he was one of the four and I don't know how many of the four were selected but he was um so hopefully he should hear soon about when he will starting training for that um and then the other big thing I've had a lot of baking to do um I've had two weddings one was yesterday uh so my Friday Saturdays have been pretty busy with baking um, I had one about three weeks ago. I also had another cake that week. I had a cake last week for my nephew's, um, little party that we had. So there's, there's been a lot of, um, a lot of baking going on in my kitchen. 
I'll post photos of cakes and stuff at the very end of this video uh, if you're interested. The one I did yesterday was really cool. It was kind of an unconventional wedding cake. Um, it was just like a small five inch cake. I do relatively, I like taller cakes. I think they look really cool. Um, and it was a like a navy blue buttercream with gold on the top. And it was beautiful. I love unconventional things like that. So um, I also went to that wedding, which obviously fills up time. Football season has started. I went to one of the OSU games. It was the OSU Cincinnati game. My brother had a tailgate. He went to UC. Um, he wore his Buckeye gear, but he went to UC. Most of his friends there were UC. It was a good mix. Um, OSU crushed Cincinnati, like demolished them. Uh, and they've been playing extremely well this year, which makes me uh, hopeful. So I think right now they played Michigan State last night and they won. Um, they were ranked four. We'll see where they're at this week. Um, I'm perfectly fine where they're at. I don't need to be number one, although in my art, they're in the number one team. But, you know, we'll let the analysts do their job and that's fine where we're at right now. So um, I've had... I feel like I didn't have a lot of stitching. And then of course I pulled all my stuff out and I have a, a relatively large stack here. I think I have 10 whips to show you. Um, two of those are new starts. I also had two other new starts, but those are fit and those were both finishes. Um, I can't show you either of those cause those are going to be gifts for people that watch my videos. Um, I have one started that is, but you, I, I know who the, the recipient is and I don't know if she watches my videos. Um, so I'll show you that one, but yeah, so my day is going to include getting all of this stuff put away, um, maybe start packing a little bit. And then I also have to finish this, finish some projects today. Um, so that's on my agenda, which is why it's still relatively early for me, at least I'm not a morning person. So I have my coffee and we're just going to go to town. And of course I have Paul. I always have Paul, right guys? So um, I'm going to start with my two new starts um, and then we'll go through my massive pile of whips I've got going on here. So my first new start, um, if I remember, or I will remember, but if I have the motivation to put a picture of what the finished design is, I will put that here. Again, probably not going to happen, but whatever. Um, this is called Book House, um, and it's by Stone Stone Street Stitch Works. Um, I don't know why that's so hard to say. And this is an adorable little pattern. I saw it on Instagram. I think it was Fairy Tarot Stitcher, something along those lines. Um, she had finished this project. Um, and so there's a house with two trees on either side and the trees, if you look close enough, the leaves are made, the leaves branches are made of books. Um, and it's kind of got like a blue orangey brown feel to the leaves or the, the book covers. I might change it to be a little bit more crazy. Um, so that you can almost tell that it's not leaves, but books. Um, I don't know. I started with the house because I really like the house. Um, and her finish was really cool. So I think it's this window right here and I obviously have not finished stitching yet. Um, most of the windows I think are a darker color, like the interior part of them, like all the lights are off, but then this window, uh, is stitched with yellow. Uh, so it looks like one of the lights is on, like someone's staying up and reading. Um, and she actually, with her finish, she put a light behind the fabric. Um, and so when you turn it on, this little window glows, which is an amazing idea. Add lights to light up your cross stitch, right? I think she even had a hashtag light up your cross stitch. Um, so this is probably like one of my favorite pieces to work on right now. I feel like it'll be a really quick stitch. Um, and it says something along the top. So I've lived, I've lived longer in books than I've lived anywhere else. Um, which is a really, really cute sentiment, especially if you're a reader like I am. So 
uh, Bookhouse by Stone Street Stitchworks. Stitched on 28 count Joblin Twilight Mist. I think by Witchold. Witchold or Zweibert. I don't remember which one. I stole it from Katie. Katie Glass. Hi, Katie. Andy. Hi. Um, yeah, so that's one of my favorite pieces right now. The second piece um, is another new start. Uh, and this is for the Harry Potter Instagram uh, swap. And like I said, you don't know who my partner is. So I'm going to show you this. Uh, this is the design off of Etsy. It's called Magic Wand. I'll, if I remember, I'll link the designer. Um, and I'll also post a picture of what it looks like here. If I remember, which I probably didn't. Or I was just too lazy to do it. Um, and so it's a wand... And then it's just kind of got like a big burst of like light at the at the tip. Um, and I, it literally only calls for four different colors. Um, so everything was based in DMC. I did convert it out. So this is Weeks Dye Works Swiss Chocolate, which has some lovely variegated color to it. It's showing up really well in the wand. Um, and then, you guys know, I'm not an ordinary stitcher. I love sparkle. So, um, I, I can't remember. I think it's darker in the middle, and then it gets light out. So, I got three different colors of Petite Treasure Braid, um, which will show up amazingly on the black. Um, and I'll kind of do it in those colors. So, very excited to work on this. It's going to be a real quick stitch. Um... I think it said they roughly want it to be a four by six, which this will be. It might be a little bit bigger than that. And if I finish this really quickly and I don't think it's enough, um, I might add a quote. I have an idea of how I want to finish this. Um, I have until like November 13th to finish it and pack up my little gift and send it out. So I have plenty of time. This will go really quickly. Like this was one night's work. It's like a hundred stitches. Like, it's going to go fast. Um, but I think my idea, if I, if it comes to mind, if I, you know, if I'm crunched on time, it'll just end up being like a pillow finish or something. Cause I bought a sewing machine. I'm so excited guys. Someone's going to have to teach me how to make bags now. Katie, teach me how to make a bag. Yeah. So those are my fun colors. Super shiny. Love it. Um, yeah. So those are the two new starts that I can show you. Like I said, my other two were starts and finishes. Um, so those are stitchy gifts that will be going out soon so we're just going to work my way through my pile everything has kind of been um worked into magical stitches i'm not going to go through and tell you which ones because i don't have my um journal and i haven't been writing it on my post-it notes like i used to so i used to put it on little post-it notes like this normally on the chart somewhere um and what I used it for. Well, we're not going to do that today. If I remember something off the top of my head, um, I'll share. But I know some people don't like that. Right? Right. You know who you are. Um, so I did just work on this one fairly recently. Uh, this is Yule Queen by Primitive Hair. Um, I started this last August as part of a stitch along. And that person probably finished it. Like late, like late last year. So I'm super far behind. I'm real good at stitch alongs. Um, and I'm using the called for colors and I'm stitching this on 28 count shenanigans um, in Lugana by Seraphim Fabrics. Um, Lori Nowak, Nowak, some, Novak, something like that. Um, Seraphim Hand Dyed Fabrics by Lori. She's on Facebook. Um, that's where her group is. That's where you find her fabric. This is... Oh, no, this is 32. This is 32 count shenanigans. So this was the fabric we all bought last year um, to stitch on at Whistle Stop. Um, and I wanted to do Zuka. And the, I'm doing Zuka all in beads. I can't remember if Zuka's in here. Oh, Zuka is in here. Um... And it, the beads weren't fitting right on 32 count fabric. 
So I had this piece here. It's a good size. I feel like I have something in mind for that side, which is exciting. Um, I don't know when I'm going to start that, but that's probably what I'll do. So I worked a lot. Let me get this loose thread out of here. Um, on her dress, those little dots. Once I kind of finish that, and it's not all like perfectly in line. Like there's always one in a, I've been working kind of in a diagonal pattern. And there's always one in the diagonal that doesn't follow the same pattern. It's like moved over, <sighs> which is real annoying or has an extra space. Um, so I can't, I do have to look at the pattern quite a bit. So it takes me longer than I think it's going to, um, but it's coming along. And once I get that done, I'll stitch like the other areas and then it'll just be fill in around the little bobbles. Bobbles. It's a fun word. All right. So that was number one. I didn't take anything out of the project bags this time to make it easier to clean up. Look at this. I can even, even just throw it right in my, right in my bin next to me. Which means I'm done. All right. This next one I've been obsessed with lately. Um, and this is Glendon Place Thanksgiving. Super cute. Um, I used this one for like an entire week's worth of homework, which we got bonus points if we were able to do like all the different tasks with one project. Um, and I was able to. So this one got a good chunk of work on it. And this is the cutest turkey in the world. And his body isn't even stitched yet. Like he's still just a little bit of a ghost turkey with some feather feathers. Um, so I am doing mostly DMCs for this one. I have, I think, three of the colors I picked uh, to use the dinky dies. So it is charted in dinky dies. Um, when I kitted it up at the craft gallery, a lot of the colors had like no variegation to them. Um, and so I, what I did is I pulled them and then I took them over to the DMC and kind of compared them. Most of them were pretty similar and I was like, it's not worth it. So I think there were one or two that I have made some color, um, swaps to mainly his hat. It was supposed to be like an olive green color in DMC, and I did not like it. Um, so I switched it to, I think, 3081. No, 3371. So a really dark brown. Um, and I think it looks great. The black was too black. Um, but I think it looks good. So this is one of the dinky dyes down here that's heavily variegated, obviously. Um, that's Cat's Cat. I kept that one, the turkey's body. This one isn't highly variegated, but it was a good color that I really liked. Uh, this is called Nutwood. And then the words in the middle, I'm definitely keeping um, Indian Summer because it's highly variegated, really, really pretty. So those are the only three dinky dyes that I'm using on this. Stitching with the dinky dyes on this fabric. This is a 28 count. Joblin in Queen's and Queen Anne's lace is amazing. It's like butter. Like silks, I'm like, eh. some silks are really nice to work with. Silks on Joblin is like a game changer. If I could do everything, silks and Joblin, I would die of pure happiness. So the variegation in the fabric is showing up really, really well on camera. I don't feel like it sh translates as well in real life. Like when I look at it, like I can see it, but I'm looking for it. It shows up really well on camera. It's a lot more subtle, much more subtle. So like I said, made some excellent progress on that one. I would of course love to have this done by Thanksgiving, but I, my list is growing in terms of what's a priority right now. Which, speaking of priorities, this is one of them. Now, the main design here is almost finished, uh, but I have to, I'm going to put her name on it. So this is my Disney Castle. 
and this is on 20, 28 count um, beach walk, beach walk or beach comb. I can never remember. It's a Leslie fabric um, under the sea. I have like a whole yard of this. Um, so it had, I got it on Lugana and it was a little bit more pink and purple than tan and gray that I was expecting, but I love it nonetheless. And I think it's perfect for this project. It is an opalescent fabric. I don't kind of see that. Um, and you're like, we'll say you're like done with that. So I have literally just a couple flowers on there and then I'm going to put her name, um, underneath, um, this willow jean. So this is going to be a Christmas present. She was born July 25th. So we're behind, um, but getting real close on that one. Um, that might, I might take that to Tennessee just cause I know that I'll at least be able to finish the castle part of it. Um, and then I can move on. Up next is one of my favorites. And this is Rosewood Manor Sunrise. I love this pattern so much. And this is on 32 count. Hand dyed by Stephanie, opalescent linen, and Banshee. And so I got the word sunrise done, started in the next row, and I got the rest of that second row done with all the, oh, there we go. It's like I can't see. Um, this row here is what I did. So I finished sunrise, did the little squiggle line underneath. And now I'm going down into the next row. So this might be a priority for 2020. That way I can start on the other half of the half fabric, um, sunset, which you guys know that I love those colors. So, um, beautiful piece of fabric. I love this side, like this whole section right here. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Sorry, you guys get to see me. But I still have a bunch of cleaning to do because I baked yesterday and then I went to the wedding. Um, so my kitchen is roughly cleaned, but then I brought home all of the cupcake containers. Um, so those are sitting in bags on my floor. Um, I just have a lot to clean up because my house is a disaster right now. So put that away. Next one is Zuka by Alessandra Adelaide. So this is the design. You guys have probably seen this one. And her designs are really great because they're really, in terms of colors, you know, a lot of the color, you know, very, very limited in the number of colors. So you can easily change the designs um, to suit your preference. I am doing this one in beads, as you guys probably know. Um, and I've been able to work into the orange a little bit, um, which is super exciting. So this is on 28 count shenanigans, um, by Lori, um, Seraphim Fabrics. Uh, same thing. It's a Lugana. Guys, can I just hold this up here for the next hour so it can be a screenshot because look at that shine. It's so pretty which just reminded me that I need to smile more through my videos so that all of my pictures aren't like this which is going to be the one that it captures now because I just did that um oh, once I get in a groove on this one this one goes relatively quickly um I mean in terms it's beads so it goes as quickly as beads can go but because I do a full x through them these are delicas um I think size 11, size 15. Oh, it says silver lined orange. I don't remember what size these are. I bought these so long ago. That's so worn off, I can't even read it. Where's my other orange? Other orange tube. None of these say 
what size they are. So I have silver, silver lined orange and I think silver lined green. Something like that. I don't know. I love them. Um, it's always a fun project to work on. And someday this shiny beast will hang in my house around the fall. So there is that one. This one needs to go in a new project bag that I have to show you from my haul. Um, but this is my Christmas list by Silver Creek Samplers. Um, tech guy in the hive was stitching this at StitchCon. I loved it. I already had the pattern and so I decided to kit it up. Um, I got the fabric from the craft gallery up in Finley, Ohio, and it is Gretchen's Gray by Dixie, Dixie Samplers. Dixie Sampler, yep. Um, which they don't make fabric anymore. It's 32 count linen. I want all the Gretchen Gray in the world. Um, so I have been working on the words and then I started going back in and adding in different pieces just normally to get me to counts. And so I also didn't have to move my key snap a whole lot. Um, I love how this one is turning out. It's super cute. I am converting some of the colors um, so that that car is Victorian motto sampler, bluebells that I stole from Katie. The words are Victorian motto sampler, blue bonnet that I stole from Katie. Um, I'm going to be using this brown. That was a candy hand dyed specialty. I've got some ribbon red. Like classic color works, um, Hunter Green by Weeks. Um, so just some different colors. What am I using that for? I have something in here and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm using this for. It's very purple. I don't think there's any purple in here. Maybe that's my gray. In the daylight, though, it's extremely purple. All right, we might have to reconsider this one. It looks gray from here. And if I hold it up, it'll probably look gray. Um, it does look gray, like a tanny gray. But looking at it in daylight, it is quite purple. Interesting. I normally stitch a lot at night, so helpful that I am looking at this in the daytime. Um, so like I said, I'm going to look this one out. But made some decent progress on this. Uh, Nathan, how are you doing on this one? What are you doing is going as slowly as I am. He was like, I'm going to have this one done by the end of the year. I was like, I'm not. And then I think you reconsidered that. We're as uh, secret stitching buddies on this one. He said that out or said that in one of his videos. And Kia was like, Oh, that was the other thing I've done since my last video. I went down to keepsakes. Um, I took a whole day off instead of a half day. I think this was right after I made my video. Might have been that same week. I don't remember. Time just escapes me. Um, but went down to keepsakes, took the whole day off, stitched there. Kia um, from Kia B on, here on Floss Tube showed up randomly and uh, I got to st stitch with her for most of the day. And then we had Crockpot Friday. Um, I spent the night at Pam and Steph's like I normally do. It was great. And then uh, went home later that afternoon, that next day. So. Always, we kind of finalized our plans for Whistle Stop. There have been a little bit of changes. Hopefully, hopefully everyone's able to go. There have been, you know, some different different things going on in everybody's lives, which which happens sometimes. So, I'm, I'm 
I think we're, we're hoping that everyone is able to go. We have kind of some contingency plans on what might happen if things happen. So um, I don't remember what I worked on this project for, um, but this is Shannon Christine Designs. Dear Snow Gloves, this is the first one in the series that I am doing. I actually have them all here, so I'll show you the other ones that I have. Um, I think there's five in the series, five or six. And I think I'm gonna do four of them. So I also have the truck snow globe. There's a truck and a car, and I like the truck better. I don't think there's a need to do two vehicles. Excuse me. Um, Slay snow globe. I love this one. And then I think there's one with ornaments and that's the other one that I want to do. So, and they'll all be stitched on the same fabric, which is 28 count linen, opalescent linen, um, looking glass in under the sea fabrics. I love Leslie's fabrics and you'll see more of her fabric later on. Um, I think I added quite a bit of the red and the green which has really helped this piece. I started stitching in the whites and the browns and it was looking a little unfortunate um, on the fabric, like the fabric was too light. And now I think with the addition of those other colors, things are really starting to pop and come off of the fabric. Um, this one's a little bit difficult to stitch on. I think I talked about that last time. Um, the, the stitches are just kind of all spaced out which gives it a really cool effect when it's done, but it's a little tricky to stitch on. So um, I need to keep powering through on this one. I can knock out a finish really quickly if I, if I try. I have so many things I want to stitch on. Speaking of things I want to stitch on, and this is like 95% Heather's fault, Heather the confetti stitcher. If you don't watch her, you guys really need to watch Heather because She's amazing and I think we would be best friends. And I talked about how I'm a little bit obsessed with Heather. She knows this now at this point. So um, these are the Mucha, Mucha, Muka, I don't know how to say it. Um, Disney princesses, they are designed by, the art is from Hannah Alexander. And then Ashley at Pinky the Pink on Etsy converts them to patterns. They are big, they are gorgeous, they are elaborate. Um, they've got beads, they've got backstitch, they've got metallics, um, they've got petite stitches, full stitches. I'm gonna do skin one over one because I'm crazy. Um, on 36 count fabric, Thir 36 or 18. I'm doing 36 count um, even weave. It's Molino, Medino, I don't remember. Again, guys. I like to stitch. I like to make X's. I don't remember all, all the details. Um, where did this needle? I have no idea where this needle came from because there's already a needle on this project. Just set that there and hopefully not forget about it. Um, so I took her off the Q-snap and I've made quite a bit of progress um, since the last time I think I took a picture because I was browsing through Instagram or, uh, earlier today. Uh, and I've made quite a bit of progress. So Heather is almost done with her Aurora and she is stunning. I'm debating on whether I want to do Aurora or Cinderella next. Cinderella's got a whole lot of blues, obviously, because she's Cinderella. Um, and I love blues. So I'm kind of leaning towards Cinderella and I think Heather's gonna start Cinderella next so when I commented on her last video I said something about wanting to use Cinderella and we might I didn't comment back yet um, to her comment on my comment um, but we may we may sell that Heather I'm not sure yet but I'm leaning towards yes um, I'd really like to have this one finished before I do that I don't think I will though I'll probably have two of these going at once. Um, but once I get her dress done, I think her torso will go a lot quicker. Because um, it's not like 
This is easy right now because it's just some solid stitching. But when it's easy like that, my brain tends to go different places. Um, this is great though if I need a quick project to crank out some numbers for magical stitches. So, oh, I am in my final colors. So this is the last color change. Oops, okay. Last color change um, to reach the bottom of the dress. So we're getting there. I just gotta find the bottom. They're pretty big sections though. I think I have like a two inch border on the bottom, which should be fine. If I need extra fabric for finishing, also some other fabric around the edges. I don't really care. I didn't want to get a bigger piece of fabric than I needed to because it will fit on this size. So this is 36 count pearl gray by Silk Weavers. Sorry, I should not tap my fingers because it moved my phone. Um, yeah, so loving that one. I would like to have her as a 2020 finish. I've been kind of reevaluating my goals. Um, and while I loved Magical Stitches this year, I don't know if I'm going to go on to do it again with the Disney theme. I love Disney, obviously. You've seen two Disney type patterns from me just now. And I have one more in my aerial. Um, but there are just things that I want to work on and sometimes I can't make them fit for the, the week challenges. Um, I'd rather just stitch more towards certain goals for the year, I think is what I'm going to do. So we'll see. We're still evaluating. We still have got three months before the end of the year. Um, so we're going to go through haul and some stitchy goodness, which is what I'm going to show you first. So my, uh, I do have a giveaway today. So we'll do that at the, at the very end, which reminds me now that I need to start thinking of a question for you. Um, but my last big giveaway uh, was for StitchCon 2019. And the recipient got all of her stuff. And this literally came like right after I sent, or right after I finished my last video. So it's been sitting in my um, need to do the video pile before it gets put away. Um, so this is from Debbie. And she wrote me, she sent me this lovely little card saying thanks. Um, wrote me a lovely little note inside. Thanks, Debbie. This card is adorable. It's a little panda and a little gazelle on it. So I always keep my, my cards. Um, but she asked if it would be okay if I sent her, or she sent me a pattern. Um, she asked me if I liked mirrors, and I said I do like mirrors. Um, my favorite kind of mirrors are mermaids, and that's exactly what she sent me. So she sent me Mermaid Queen which I love, 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 love. Um, so thank you so much, Debbie. I love this. This is definitely going in my stash. Um, I have a mirror started and I have another one that's possibly going to be next, uh, but she might be after that. So I love this, love this, love this. Thank you so much, Debbie. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Just so you guys are aware, if you ever want to give away, you do not have to send me something in return. Um, it is not, I do the same thing, but you do not have to do it. Um, we do not have to, you know, thank someone for giving us a gift or a giveaway by sending them a gift. It's appreciated. It, we don't need to do it. And I do it. I do it all the time. I'm just as guilty. Um, so moving into haul. When I went to Keepsakes, I think I had one or two colors of floss that I needed to buy. I don't think I bought any patterns, which is shocking. Um, I may have bought a Q-snap. I normally buy one when I go down there. Always need more Q-snaps in your life, right? Um, but I did buy a couple colors of Color and Cotton because they have that for sale now at Keepsakes, um, which is 
awesome because it's one of my favorite types of floss now. And so I just picked up a couple different ones. This is Mermaid Shimmer. So it's like a light blue mixed with a light lavender color. Beautiful. We've got Ultramarine, which is a great variegated blue. It may not show up very variegated. It's a little bit. So it's got some darker, lighter Ultramarine. That's exactly what it looks like. Um, and then this is Apricot. So when I was looking at my color in cotton before I left, I was like, what colors am I don't have a lot of? Um, and orange was one of those because I think I've been looking for a good orange in my hand dyed stash. And so I picked this out. It's apricot. It's showing up real bright right now. And it's just because the hot light is on it. Um, it's a very pretty orange. So, yeah. Just picked up a couple of those. Um, I The next thing I have was I signed up for a fabric of the month. Uh, list Leslie from Under the Sea Fabrics had an opening um, in August to kind of refill, you know, for those that had dropped out. Um, she had told me at StitchCon that she was going to be doing that because I was like, I'm kind of interested in doing a fabric of the month. Um, I've worked with Leslie's fabrics before and I really enjoy them. I love her use of color. Um, I tend to do a lot, buy a lot of blue and gray fabric just because that's what I like. Um, so then when I'm going to pull a fabric, I'm not always like, I'm like, well, which blue or gray does this look best on? Um, and I have some neutrals too, but like, I think having a fabric of the month, you know, stash will maybe inspire me to be a little bit more creative. Um, and of course, the first color she sent me was a blue, which is perfect for me. You guys know that I love blue. Um, this is... It's a 32 count Lugana, which is what my subscription is for. Um, and this is, this is August. Uh, I just got a notification yesterday or Friday, maybe it was Friday night, um, that she sent out that my package is coming for September. So this is August color of the month, which is Hera. So you guys have probably all seen this because I'm behind the times, but it's a gorgeous blue purple combo it looks kind of washed out which is weird because some of these colors are showing up more vibrant this is showing up more washed out like i don't know what's going on with the camera it's all right it's a very very pretty piece of color so i am doing what is this that quarter that quarter Oh, beautiful. Let's say makes beautiful fabric. So that needs to go in my stash. Um, I also ordered off of Etsy from um, XJU Designs. So this is the first time I've ordered from her. Uh, what's really nice is, although it takes a little bit of time to get here, you spend over $50, which I have no problem spending over $50. On fabric and floss guys none whatsoever um, she sh ships free so it took a little time to get here um, my post office was being real dumb like so it was here but it probably took me like a week to get they had dropped it off or they had come to my house I had to sign for it which is fine um, but I wasn't here the day they signed for it and so I put a little slip in the mailbox that I signed, um, which, and I left a date and time, which was a date and a time that I was home and they didn't come. Um, and so then they attempted to drop it off a second time and I got another little slip in the mail and said that, you know, that they had tried to get me to sign it I was home that whole day literally home nobody rang my doorbell I went outside and the slip was in the mailbox so I was a little irritated at that uh, I didn't get too hot at the post office I did say something but it wasn't 
the front desk people's fault. It's my mail carrier. And it was there. It was at the front desk there. Oh, I was heated. It was that same day. I literally got in the mail and like an hour later went to, and it was at the front desk. So I'm not sure how they tried to contact me or rang the doorbell and I wasn't home. Whatever. Carriers. I ordered some different floss types, which we'll show you. She sent me a little freebie. Um, this is Tussaw Silk. I don't know if that's the color or what. It's kind of like a purpley brown. It looks weird for a silk, but that's what it is. So this was my little freebie that she sent me. Um, ordered a bunch of different colors just to kind of see how they would turn up. They look, obviously, you know, not every computer is going to be the same, but they looked pretty different in person than they did on the computer screen. I'm still happy with everything I got, um, but I will know that going forward. So I ordered like two skeins of each color that I bought just in case, you know, I liked something. I didn't want to run out of it. Um, so the first is called a uh, slushy ice and what she does is she can do she does two different bases so she has a DMC base and then a matte base so she uses a different kind of floss and so it's not as shiny or she you know it doesn't have that DMC sheen to it um, so this is a DMC base in slushy ice and normally like she'll have the two different options as different posts um, and the colors look very different on the computer. Um, so I'm wondering, I should, probably should have done like a real life, like gotten one in DMC and one in um, the matte. Um, but I did, I think I did DMC for most of them just because I do like the DMC sheen. So this is called Slushy Ice. It's a tannish gray. It's a very pretty color. This is Peacock Lilac. Much more variegated. Kind of a fun color. On the computer, it looked like it had a lot more blue. Um, it's pretty much purple, which is fine. I'll find something to use for that. Um, Deep Impact is the next one. And these are all DMC based. This looked very blue. It came out more like a like a blue and a teal. And this to me looks more teal and a green, which is fine. Um, again, all really, really pretty colors, so I can't complain. And you know, she even says like you know, your computer monitor may be different than mine, um, and I completely understand that. This is probably my favorite. Mm, mm, I don't know, probably one of my favorites, and this is Mariska's red. Um, I love how variegated this one is. This is a fantastic color. If you're looking for a good red, I mean, it goes from like a bold red to a darker red. I love this one. This is probably one of my favorites out of the group, um, as is this one. And this is the only one that I got in a matte base. Um, and these ones are a little bit differently dyed than these ones. These are hand painted. Um, and so like I think she cuts the links and lays them all out and it's like literally like she paints them in an ombre. Whereas I don't know how she just probably like, loops it around and then I don't know. I don't know how she does her stuff. But I think these ones because the, the listing was a little bit different. And I think I got the last two in this colorway and it's called Stormy Ocean. And it's amazing. Let me flip this around. So um, it goes from like a light sea foam green all the way to this dark blue. And I love it. I'll have to find something, some kind of like mandala y type pattern to use that on because it's stunning. Love that. Um, and so I also ordered some fabric from her as well. I ordered just a straight piece of linen. This is 32 count um, Belfast linen. 
she uses as white art. Um, and this is called Old Linen. So it's got quite a bit of modeling to it. Um, it looks really gray on the computer again. And it's, it is, it is a gray. It's a very green gray um, with kind of some tan splotches. So I don't know if you can actually tell that or not. But very pretty nonetheless. See what I mean about gray linen, gray fabrics. I love gray fabrics. Um, this has also been sitting there a while that has need to be put away. And then I ordered kind of like a grab bag. So she does like different seasonal grab bags. And um, the one that I really wanted was her summer sensation pack so that you get eight different pieces. Um, they don't have names, but you get eight, eight different pieces of fabric. They're nine by 13. So they're relatively small pieces, but good for small projects, um, ornaments, stuff like that. So, and again, it, it just gave me a good selection of different things to kind of play with. So we have this lovely like hunter green. A lot of these colors actually remind me of fall. There are some that remind me of summer, but a lot of them remind me of fall. So I think that's, that's interesting of how we differ, how we interpret the different colors. We have this bright yellow, which I'm going to actually hold the next one up, um, compared to, because we've got two different yellows. This one's more of like a golden yellow. Um, so they are pretty, it's pretty thin fabric. These are 28 count linens, um, but we got this bright yellow. I'm going to kind of fan them out. This goldenrod type color. And then I'm going to hold this one up too. Because uh, it's kind of color variegation here, right? Um, next to this more orangey, like a marigold. So we got gold and then like a marigold. Going a little bit into the orange color family way. We also have this very pretty corally red. Showing up real red. Um, it's a little bit more subtle. Actually looks better or more true when it's opened all the way up because it's a little bit more opaque. Um, or translucent, I guess. Translucent. It, like, it looks really saturated there. And it's a little bit more subtle. Kind of like that. Um, but this beautiful coral, coral, corally red. We have this beautiful avocado green type color. I love this one. I think it's raining right now, which is great because my mom's need water. Hopefully you guys all saw my Instagram post about it raining on me when I was locked outside of my house. If not, I'll, you guys can always ask me about that story later. Or I might just tell you. Um, this is kind of like a good gingerbread like a rusty brown, which is fun. And then this is more like a chocolate brown. So some good different color options. Um, I like having just, you know, fabrics that I can kind of pull from. Um, I never used to be much of a stash person, uh, but it's definitely, my stash is growing. I love this one. I love this one next to the yellow. I think I want to put some kind of yellow floss on that. Um, so that was definitely kind of the, the first thing that I saw that really got me to get um, all of her stuff. So that's what I got from Extra Designs. And then I have a couple of things here from Cross My Heart, which is my cross stitch store here in Columbus. Local needle workshop. First is I again picked up some more fabric. This is a PTT PTP um, Belfast in Twilight. Very very pretty blue. Again, I tend to gear towards blue fabrics. Blues and grays. Thirty-two count. I like 32. I also like some higher counts. 28 
I like working on 28, but it has to be the right kind of 28. Um, otherwise, I feel like I have, I'm a coverage nut, so I feel like I almost have to use three strands on 28, and I don't always like working with three strands. Um, I also got this, I think this is a, this is Weeks uh, in Liberty. This is also, this is a 30 count. Um, and it is just as red as it is showing up on the screen. No idea what I'm going to stitch on this, but I needed to have it. So that day I walked out and I was like, those are some very patriotic colors. I've got the Twilight and the Liberty. I gave you these nice little bags that are already labeled. So these are pre-cuts that I just grabbed. They will cut fabric for you if you want them to, but I just, I like to sort through the, the, um, the prints. Uh, I've seen this one a bunch, especially after Galleria. This is Erica Michaels um, Mistletoe Kisses. So it gives you, I think, three different patterns. Gives you the two berries, right? I don't know. Gives you the berries and then this little um, pillow, pin, pin needle, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one's just really cute. Everyone kept showing it and I was like, damn it, I need to have it. And of course it was sitting right at the register at Cross My Heart because smart advertising. And then I have another Erica Michaels here which we're all planning on starting something um, on our whistle stop trip. And so this is one of my options that I'm gonna take. I still don't know if I'm gonna start this one or my Seasons in Chalk Fall. I think I have the threads that I need for that one. Um, so I could kit that up as well. And cause I have summer, winter and spring done. So I need fall done. Right now I have a different little picture back there that says happy harvest um, that I got at Hobby Lobby. So I put my frame away because I don't have fall and I don't want to leave the other seasons up right now. So, but this one I saw when I went to the store, I love it. I think it's another new one. Uh, this is, does have the gauze in it. And I, if I stitch it, I don't think I'm going to stitch it on the gauze. So, um, this is fall for autumn. And it's super cute. I love kind of the cursive, the different fonts. I love the colors. Um, and when I was pulling the colors at the store, I was just more and more in love. So what I th think I'm gonna do, this is, so it's called for 40 count gauze. This is a 36 count R&R um, vintage homespun. I should have more than enough fabric for it and use that as a neutral whereas when you're stitching on the gauze um, it obviously doesn't have a background show me the back so you fill in the entire thing which I believe calls for roasted marshmallow um, so this is obviously a lot lighter than the fabric so this would be the background versus this is the background, but I think that's okay. So I'm gonna show you the colors here because the colors are stunning. So we've got, not sure how I'm gonna do this with one hand, but I'll figure it out. Um, Weeks Dirt Road. I'm just gonna pull from wherever I can. This is Gentle Art Ginger Snap. Gentle Art Country Redwood, which this is probably my favorite color out of all of them. I say that and then there's another one that I like as well. Um, Gentle Art Autumn Leaves. Gentle Art Gold Leaf, I like this one. Gentle Art Fragrant Cloves. Mm, running out of room. My hand's in the way. Uh, this is Gentle Art Endive. Piney Woods, also by Gentle Art. Go right there. 
And then this is molasses, and this is a week's. Um, which I think that's what the, the letters are either in the Piney Woods or the week's molasses. Pulling colors off. But I think those colors on there work really well. I don't think anything would blend in. This is probably the closest, and I still think it would stand out quite well. Um, but I love the colors on this one. Super, super pretty saturated fall colors. Um, so I'm taking this one for sure. I don't know, like I said, if this will be my start um, or something else will. But I'm not sure how much I'll work on it while I'm there just because I have some other things that are on my agenda. So I have one more thing from a haul here. And then we'll go and do the giveaway that I've already almost forgot about. Um, and so while Galleria was going on, I got a message from my dear friend, Stephanie. I've just keep stitching. And she was like, this project bag reminds me of you. It was a diddly daddle designs. Um, and I was like, I need that. And she goes, she says there's a few more in her shop. Um, and so basically as soon as I was done messaging her or yeah, as soon as she sent me that message, I went to Etsy and I bought it. So, uh, she sent me a little, you know, thank you for your order type deal and some Skittles. The Skittles are life. Um, but I'm just going to let the bag do the talking. So this is my first daily daddle bag. Um, it's got a real cute polka on the, on the inside. I like it cause it's, it's real. it's like a really random polka. Whereas, you know, a lot of them are kind of like real symmetrical, like follow patterns and lines, but it's Christmas and it's cupcakes. And this is glittery. Glittery. Yes, it's glittery. It's either glittery or metallic, but it's, it's like glittery and metallic. It's pretty. cupcake stitcher had to have the Christmas cupcake bag so I need to move my uh my Christmas list which is my big Christmas project that I'm working on out of this lovely bag that Delisha um Kentucky Sass got me um from my, my day of the dead project into this bag because this doesn't really go with the bag so but it goes with this one I'm obsessed and then her she always really good with her buttons um so on one side, we just have kind of like some chocolate background with sprinkles. And on the other side, she fussy cutted. Um, so it got a little snowflake. So very cool. I'm very, very pleased with this. I can now see why people rave about her bags. It's because they are very well made. Alrighty. So I'm done with updates. The last thing I have is a small giveaway, and I still did not think of a question because I was just talking. Um, so if you watch my most recent video that I posted um, about a week or so ago, it was a Stitchy Box unboxing. Um, that was the second Stitchy Box that I had purchased. It was the royalty one. Um, the first one I had done was a mermaid one. And I have one more which for this year, which is the pirate box um, that should be coming hopefully in another two to three weeks. I haven't gotten a notification yet, but I think it was looking at October um, for when it was being shipped out. Coffee's getting cold as I talk too much. Um, but we actually got two patterns in the box and the first one I already had. Um, so it is a J, JBW Designs, um, French Country Crown. So it's a real small pattern. Super cute though. So it's a crown made of crowns, hearts, swans, anything kind of, there's little keys in there, anything royalty related. Um, so I already have this in my stash. I think it would be a real quick stitch. Um, when I bought the the pattern um, originally, they had the model because they had a trunk show um, at Cross My Heart, and 
The model was stunning. It was stitched on 28 count. I think, I don't know if it was a 28 count, but it was um, over one on navy fabric. It's basically this. This is their model. Um, white on navy fabric, and it was stunning. So, that being said, what, if you want this pattern, of course you have to be 18, you have to be a subscriber, please do all the things. Um, you do not have to be in the United States, just know that it will probably take quite a bit longer to get to you. Um, what color combo would you stitch this with? That's what I want to know. Um, would you use... And if you don't know, you could say, you can even just go, you know, something real simple, basic, like I would use a light fabric with a darker thread, um, pastels, if you have specific colors that you know you would do. Um, I want to know what color, like what combo color you would do. Would you do this in beads? Would you do it in metallics? Are you crazy like me? Um, I just want to know. How would you, how would you pair these? Um, so it calls for... Uh, blue and white, which those are the same color combos, over two, over one. Oh, that's the difference. Um, yeah. So here's the first finish. I think that's the blue DMC 156 or B5200 for the white stitches on the blue. How would you stitch it? Let me know in the box below. Otherwise, um, I think that's what I've got for you guys today. I would love if you leave a comment. Um, give me a like. Let me know that you stopped by. Uh, and uh, I will see you next time. I don't know when that is. I would like to say that I will post after I get back from Tennessee. But I'm realistic and I don't know if I will. So uh, we're going into the holiday season which is always super crazy. Uh, fall has finally arrived here, so I get to wear my sweaters, which is awesome. My moms are still alive. Part of the reason why I got locked out of my house was because I was trying to keep my moms alive. But yeah, I hope you all have been well. This is a long video, and now I'm just making it longer by jabbering here at the end. But I do want to thank you for stopping by. Thank you if you leave a comment if you're a loyal subscriber. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people to watch, um, and I really appreciate you coming and spending your time with me. So until next time, happy stitching, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.